What's going on everyone? Today I'm in the UK visiting my good friend Shmi150 checking out this amazing Morgan three-wheeler, something I've been really looking forward to checking out on this trip. Tim, tell us a little more. So the three-wheeler, I used to have one, unfortunately I don't anymore, so you couldn't see that, but the factory have very kindly lent us this car, their three-wheel art with the design work by Pop Band Color. But it's a car I absolutely love. Over to you. This is gonna be so much fun. <laughs> As always, this is gonna be a detailed, in-depth review of the three-wheeler. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go over the performance data. We'll take an odd drive through London and show you many of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. A big shout out to London Morgan for helping make this video possible. For more information on their inventory and services, please feel free to check out their website provided in the description box below. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in and fire it up. In order to start, go ahead and insert the key. Just turn the vehicle's power on. Foot on the brake and clutch. Flip up this little cap and hit the start button to go. What a fantastic sound. As you'll learn throughout this video, the Morgan three-wheeler is a very, very simple car. The rack and pinion steering is completely mechanical and devoid of any type of power assistance. While it does have disc brakes in front, they're not powered so you don't have ABS. There's no traction control or stability control, and in no way does that matter whatsoever. It just enhances the overall driving experience. Different steering wheels and styles are available. It's measuring 14 inches in diameter. It can be easily detached for easier ingress and egress. The standard gearbox is a 5-speed manual transmission borrowed from the Mazda Miata, decorated by an aluminum shift knob, leather shift boot, and a riveted aluminum plate down below with bespoke handbrake and turn signal levers. This is one of the coolest cars I've ever had the pleasure of experiencing. I mean, just look at it. There are other cars that kind of compete in this class, like the Ariel Atom, the Caterhams, and some much cheaper alternatives, but nothing that gives the signature hand-built quality and driving profile that you would get with a three-wheeler. It's a phenomenal vehicle. The interior layout is all inspired by aeronautics and really brings you back to the 1930s. Everything looks and feels bespoke. You have leather patches on either side of the anodized aluminum instrument cluster, and it's all riveted to the structure to keep everything nice and secure. Aluminum toggle switches, classic video gauges, and a bomb release inspired starter button. The Morgan three wheeler brings motoring back to its basics, transporting you to a time where things were a bit simpler and carefree. Seeing and experiencing it on the road for the first time was perhaps the most fun I've ever had during my time on YouTube. It causes you to rethink everything that you thought you knew about how a car can bring a smile to your face. It was never built to be just another form of transportation, quite the opposite in fact. It's a tool for adventure and excitement. With its many bespoke options including colors, finishes, and components, it could also be a proper extension of your personality. 
When HFS Morgan created his first three-wheel runabout in 1909, it drew such a significant level of attention that not only spearheaded the cycle car craze, but led to the creation of the Morgan Motor Company in 1910. Now, 105 years later, the Morgan family continues their tradition of building cars that blend old-school construction techniques with timeless designs, modern technology, and proper performance. Despite Morgan's century-old automotive pedigree, the three-wheeler, as it's referred to today, might as well be their most iconic model. After all, it was the original Morgan. Produced until the early 1950s, their latest iteration, inspired by the Morgan Super Sport of the 1930s, employs the same engineering and design elements as its predecessors, combining steel, wood, and a front-mounted V-twin motorcycle engine. These combined traits are what makes the new three-wheeler such a remarkable car. To truly appreciate the car, you have to be a motoring enthusiast and understand its intended purpose. It's not cheap at an estimated base price of $45,000 in the US, and it isn't very practical as a daily driver, if the lack of storage space or a roof was any indication. But it's probably the purest form of driving enjoyment you can buy at any price. Seriously, you can drive this all day long in the heart of London, which is packed with supercars and exotics of all price points and exclusivity, and the Morgan will draw just as much if not more attention all day every day. Everyone wants a glimpse or a picture, quickly followed by a big grin, thumbs up, shout of approval, or all the above. The modern three-wheeler was first introduced at the 2011 Geneva Motor Show with production beginning for the 2012 model year. Morgan describes the car as a fusion of old and new. The silhouette looks like it was lifted straight from the pre-war era. It's entirely assembled and finished by hand, constructed utilizing an aluminum hull with welded steel AP-coated tubular chassis, with a supplemental ash wood frame that provides the needed support for the hand-beaten aluminum body panels. Each car also comes with a special hammer as a symbolic gesture, which back in the day would be used to actually repair minor dents in the body. The wood forms are crafted and shaped by hand, joined together by high-strength adhesive and screws. All in all, there are 23 individual wood pieces that form the complete frame. When completed, the frame goes through a dipping process to protect the wood from rot or decay. In a world where the automotive industry is largely based on electronics, it is so refreshing to see a car that literally has no driver assistance features. It makes you feel at one with the car. The best part is that the three-wheeler is fully legal in the United States, with about a dozen or so dealers across the country. Being classified as a motorcycle, it doesn't have to go through strict federal safety and emissions testing. Morgan updated the three-wheeler for 2014, introducing a host of revisions to improve vehicle dynamics. For starters, an increase in torsional stiffness and subsequent improved handling is thanks to a new tubular front leg cross member that's welded to the upper two chassis members. Increasing durability and smoother power delivery can be attributed to a revised center drive unit. The pedal positions are now adjustable to suit different buyers. The bevel box out back was further isolated by mounting it on rubber bushings to improve overall noise, vibrations, and harshness, making longer drives a bit more enjoyable. The steering is said to satisfy a broader range of international markets, but most importantly in eliminating bump steer and increasing high-speed stability, thanks to the new chassis reinforcements up front and raising the height of the steering arm. The urban cooling pack seen sitting on top of this engine provides additional cool air for improved thermal management when idling and driving at speeds below 10 miles an hour. Morgan also brought in the customizability with new colors, combinations, materials, accessories, and more. Finally, subtle vertical vents were added in the rear bodywork inspired by its historical predecessors. Morgan also provides a 30-month or 30,000-mile warranty. The three-wheeler features black wire wheels up front reminiscent to the original style. It's shod and vintage-looking 19x4-inch Avon 65 Series Mark II tires, finished with hub-mounted cycle fenders. The rear is a bit more modern, consisting of a 16-inch alloy wheel and 195-55 Redestine Sport Track 3 unidirectional rubber, able to hold around 0.75g of lateral acceleration. For its time, the three-wheeler set many racing records in its category, some of which still hold true. While it may not be the best handling car in terms of today's standards, the formula provided to be quite successful back then. The brakes consist of 280mm internally ventilated front discs with aluminum calipers, while the rear has a 250mm drum brake. Up front, it benefits from a modern, fully independent coilover double wishbone suspension. Like the original, it is fully exposed and features lightweight tubular uprights with Morgan's traditional splined hubs. The body-on-frame design carries a high scuttle roll bar above the dash structure to add a measure of stability and safety, keeping the front end planted to the ground. 
Above that are twin fly screens, which help with wind deflection and give an unmistakable classic look. Rear roll hoops provide another degree of safety for occupants and contain the rigid seat belt mounting points. The rear wheel is supported by a twin sided swing arm and dual coilover dampers, mounted behind the bevel box and in line with the output sprocket. Overall length is 127 inches with a width of 67.7 inches and a height of 39.4 inches riding on a 94 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight is around 1,268 pounds. The three-wheeler is powered by an SNS 1983cc 56-degree V-twin, an all-aluminum X-wedge engine that develops 82 brake horsepower at 5250 RPM and 140 nm of torque, which roughly converts to 103 pound-feet at 3250 RPM. It's an air-cooled dry sump pushrod motor with electronic fuel injection and two valves per cylinder, sitting on rubber-isolated engine mounts. There's three belt-driven camshafts in the crankcase, one central intake cam, and two outer exhaust cams. This configuration allows the push rods to run nearly parallel to the valves. Compression ratio is rated at 9.75 to 1. A one-piece forged crankshaft with plain main and connecting rod bearings help decrease weight with subsequent reductions in inertia to compensate for the car's weight. Even though it's light, it's still heavier than a motorcycle. Power is sent through a bespoke drive shaft damper to a 5-speed manual gearbox sourced from the Mazda Miata, before heading to Morgan's bevel box at the rear. The bevel gear alters the direction of rotation by 90 degrees, transferring the inertia to a grooved Kevlar reinforced V-belt, with lightweight aluminum sprocket that rotates the rear wheel, similar in concept to a motorcycle. 0 to 62 miles an hour is rated at 6 seconds or the top speed of 115 miles an hour. As far as fuel economy, the three-wheeler is rather thrifty depending on how you drive it. It carries a 42-liter or 11-gallon tank and is rated at 21 miles to a gallon in the city and 45 on the highway, with a combined average of just a hair over 30 miles to a gallon. The interior of the three-wheeler emulates the exterior well in providing a classically simple design. Fit and finish is excellent and comes with high-quality aniline leather upholstery and padding on the center console and sides of the body. The body accents are especially comfortable when hanging your arm out. Surprisingly, the three-wheeler is relatively comfortable for what it is. The seats don't adjust or anything like that, but they offer an appreciable amount of support. Like I mentioned previously, for 2014, the three-wheeler gains manually adjustable pedals. Despite the intimate cabin, there's also a ton of leg space, so much so that my 5'10 frame could easily extend all the way out with a few inches to spare. This car underneath the wrap is actually black and you can see some of those painted areas carry on to the interior. You have small storage pockets on the doors and plenty of padding and even a 12 volt power outlet underneath. Climbing in takes a little bit of effort, the easiest way is just to grab those roll hoops back there and lower yourself in. You don't want to grab the steering wheel necessarily because it is a detachable unit. Heated seats are available as is an intercom system. Let's go ahead and see if she sounds.
in a hula gang. <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> We're driving a three wheeler. <laughs> Whee! the best day ever. <laughs> <laughs> Every single person you drive by just looks and smiles and I think the weather probably only adds to that. It's like, <laughs> yes, I'm the idiot that's happy to do this. <laughs> to the hold all out back what i think is pretty cool is that you can opt for this metal luggage rack that suctions to the very back and clips in with a few retaining pins towards the roll bars you can just undo all of that and lift it up to access the hold all space undo the little leather straps on either side and then just lift it up it hinges at the rear even though the cargo space is hindered a little bit by the rear wheel it's still usable being that the boot lid is made from aluminum as is the rest of the exterior panels it's also super lightweight Another nice thing being that the three-wheeler doesn't have any windows, doors, or a roof, you gotta have some way to protect the interior from the elements, especially with all of that genuine leather work. So as Tim shows, there's a soft boot cover that can go over the entire interior and snap in all the way around. It's pretty easy to do. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed Kyle's in-depth review with the Morgan three-wheeler. Be sure to go check out Shmi150 for his commentary video as we take a cruise through London. And believe me, it was a lot of fun. Take care, everybody. <laughs>